So my name is Donna Dillon, my pronouns are he, him, and I'm a freshman at KU studying political science and sociology. Um, and I've been working with Loud Light since this fall semester. Uh, and I'm Bertie. I use she, they pronouns. I'm a junior at KU studying communications and information journalism. And I've been working with Loud Light since the spring of 2021. So what brought us to this issue was realizing that um, students don't know their power, the power of their vote within the state of Kansas, um, and which like led us to like diving deeper on how that um, showed up at the University of Kansas. Um, and first we realized that the University of Kansas isn't providing resources um, around voting. And this is like registering to vote, knowing where to vote on campus and what is being voted on along with the candidates that are being voted on. And the university has failed um, historically to disseminate this information and make it easy, easily accessible for students. This most recently happened um, in the fall with the university not sending out voter registration um, information for this fall's um, local government elections. Um, and then outside of not having information on where to vote, uh, registered students aren't voting in the way that they should be. 86% um, of eligible students at KU are registered to vote, but only 70% of those students are actually voting. Um, and this is uh, from 2020, which had record high registration rates. Um, typically in Kansas, it's about 30 to 60% of students are registered to vote. And then um, somewhere in there, those students are voting. And then lastly, um, campus voting simply isn't accessible. Um, the campus polling location is not well advertised by the university and it moves on a year to year basis, making it hard for students to um, get in the habit of voting and like knowing where to. Um, secondly, um, only having one location on the entirety of campus um, has the effect of disenfranchising students who live on either side of the campus, whether that be students who live up on the hill or students who live in like scholarship housing. <laughs> so I'm going to give a little bit of an overview of the actual student power campaign. So in the 2020 election, young people proved their power to transform our nation by turning out to vote at record high levels. Yet in Kansas, we still see a lack of civic infrastructure on our college campuses, with most students um, citing accessibility to polling locations as the reason that they're not voting. Uh, so right now, uh, Donovan and I are in step three. We're currently researching and writing a bill for the legislature um, to require a polling place of some form on every college campus um, in the state of Kansas. And then following that, of course, we'll be lobbying for the bill um, and working with the Kansas Board of Regents to make that a permanent fixture here in Kansas. So something that is often left out of the um, conversation with student activism and particularly Lawrence and KU is that these two communities are often viewed as separate entities. However, they are interconnected in so many ways, especially in the issues that impact both of the communities, which can be around affordable housing, public transportation, the local job market economy, various social issues and like events and culture between the two. Um, and this interconnectivity allows for activism, activism within both realms to impact um, one and the other in a positive way because these communities are so intertwined. And in relation to voting, this matters so much because almost a third of the Lawrence population is um, University of Kansas students, and they um, reside in Lawrence for almost three quarters of the year. So having them accurately represented in voting and having access to voting is extremely important for having an, a community where everyone has a say in what's happening. Yeah, so some of the benefits of increasing this accessibility to voting are, of course, like Donovan said, representation. Um, expanding voting accessibility for college students ensures that we're actually represented at every level of government, whether that's local, state, or even our federal representatives. Um, historically, young people have been disregarded as a part of the electorate, um, and so we're trying to make sure that we take back some of that power. Um, and then retention, of course, this is an issue that KU talks about a lot um, and that Kansas faces where students after graduation are deciding to leave Kansas rather than staying um, and seeing yourself represented in your community and seeing your vote actually uh, make a difference and being able to change what happens uh, increases your desire to stay here a little bit more. Uh, and then of course, civic engagement, starting that now, getting into a pattern of voting every year, registering to vote where you live um, encourages that civic engagement throughout the rest of your life after college and onward. So to join us in the, in the fight, first you can follow us on social media at 
loud underscore light um, on all social media platforms to stay up to date with the campaign and various other things we do um, within the organization. Um, secondly, and most importantly, you can scan the QR code to the left of your screen to join hundreds of other students um, to demand a polling location on universities across the state. And lastly, you can support student activism in any ways you can in both your professional and personal lives. Yes. I do just wanna push back against one statistic that I saw in the Loud Light presentation. Our community has 94,000 people and we have about 22,000 students. So I don't think we're quite at that one third level, but I think we do have students that can make a difference in every one of our elections, particularly at that local level. And so making sure that we're seeing pathways for engagement because the things that are decided in the city commission and the county commission affect students very directly. That one third also includes, um, and we should have clarified this, also includes like faculty and staff um, because yeah. part of our thing is getting early voting. So rather than faculty and staff having to try and find a time to go vote somewhere else, being able to vote on campus. So apologies. That, that totally makes sense. And that would be very convenient for Donovan and Birdie is pairing the education information on local state federal election ballot initiatives, a part of your effort. If so, what are your hopes with that? I can start. Um, yeah, so there's already um, some requirement um, for like, I, I know we know specifically for KU, um, like federally, they're required to provide some information, um, which in some instances hasn't happened. Um, but part of our uh, conversations with um, student governments across Kansas is making sure that they have um, resources and sort of a plan in place for continuing that education that the university itself is not doing um, because it often does fall to students. Um, and I mean, yeah. yeah, we've also been talking to like other like organizations that have done um, dealt with like college campus organizing and um, voting on college campuses, along with like the LC ACLU on KU's campus specifically to um, work together to ensure that like the education all materials that the university is providing are accurate and therefore like providing those to the university so they can send them out because it's easier to come to the university with like a solution um, being like here we have these materials could you like disseminate them to your student body rather than like asking the university to do that themselves because that allows for them to uh, scapegoat a lot more and like not carry out to the effectiveness that they should be. So I've heard one of the concerns from upper administrators at KBOR institutions is that there is a fear that encouraging college students to vote means that we're pushing a particular partisan agenda, just to given kind of how age cohorts are voting and the diversity that we see on college campuses that is not necessarily reflective of the rest of our state population, particularly the older state population. And so there's a concern that we're rocking the boat or being seen as kind of going against the Kansas legislature, how obviously these arguments don't make sense. And we have federal regulations that encourage voting on college campuses. And we wanna promote citizens who are starting the habit of voting and continuing that throughout their lives. But particularly since the next time that Kansans are voting, it'll be in August, right, as students are coming back. And there are some pretty important, at least one incredibly important constitutional amendment that we all need to be considering. How do we make sure that we're engaging students and helping to alleviate some of those, or pushing back on some of those concerns that folks have about kind of rocking the boat or setting institutions up for fights that they can't have? Um, I can start. I mean, um, part of the work that was done last fall was um, getting um, sign-ons from a bunch of different organizations and students um, at each of these individual universities. Um, and so part of that came from talking with um, organizations from both sides of the aisle, making sure that we had, um, in terms of political parties, all voices represented, making sure because Loud Light is a nonpartisan organization. Um, and so making sure that we have those bases covered uh, from university to university. Um, and then, you know, we are strictly focused on 
not the the content of what's being produced, but like simply getting people to vote, like getting a poll on campus so people can vote um, with less of a focus on any direction. Do you want to? Yeah. And I think it's like also important to note that like college students and like college, like college students specifically, like aren't a monolith, like as Birdie stated, like our focus is getting to people register vote, no matter their political affiliation in efforts to have like a more representative, like um, government and like representatives who represent their constituents. Um, and then like also on that note, in regards to like historically like disenfranchised groups or like people not being represented, it's not just older Kansans, for example, in like Southwest Kansas, like the Latin population is like not accurately represented at all, yet they make up the majority of that region of Kansas. So if we're gonna talk about like the electorate not being accurately represented, we need to ensure that we're talking about the entire electorate and not just like these older like um, white populations. Yeah. And there we actually saw polling places in Dodge City moved off of public transportation routes yeah. during the 2016 and 2020 election. And that has huge implications for access to voting and ensuring that we're not just making sure that polling places are on college campuses, which is incredibly important, but also that they're accessible via public transit. Because we do have free public transportation in our community every election day, even those, election, those local elections that see a lot lower turnout. Um, but we need to make sure that we have accessible public transit so that we can have access to polling locations. Yeah, and one of our big fights has been getting um, early voting on college campuses, partially because college campuses um, are like more connected to like um, uh, local community. infrastructure, local transportation that's free to the community. So for example, like in Lawrence, like KU is kind of like the center and it's connected by like all of these bus routes. So if we had early voting locations where anyone in like Lawrence could vote there, that would turn out um, voting in the entire like community and not just for college students. Yeah. 